Agent Carter, Season 2, Episode 9, A Little Song and Dance Thoughts. Another episode I love, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, we open in A Dream by Peggy, where Michael you know, shows up and they have a little bit of great sibling banter and the then it's like it's like at, at first she's in the SSR offices but then like this neon sign comes on and she walks on to like a stage set and Really glad we got at least a little bit more of Angie Martinelli. I really missed her. She's just, she's such, she's a blast. She's one of the most fun characters on this show, and I'm really gonna miss her. It, it really sucks that they had to contrive up this to get her back into, but yeah. And... <laughs> And she dances with Dr. Wilkes, and we even get an actual musical number. Uh, you know, them they're they're singing about the the love triangle, and Angie gets some some really great the the um, um yeah the the um. I I don't know if that really is her singing, but whoever is. Doing the singing is, is great. Same thing for for Peggy. I don't know. It just it doesn't quite sound like Haley Atwell to me. But great singing, regardless of who exactly it is. <laughs> and Dottie pops up. I'm always on your mind, Peggy. And let's see, yeah, and and you know, Jarvis is like, um, wake up. And then Rose like socks her. You're just not right for the, you know, this, for the for the talent agency or something like that. So yeah, the entire dream bit is six minutes in total. Not gonna lie, there was a brief bit where I thought, oh, I guess the entire episode is just gonna be like a dream sequence, song and dance, musical thing. And I would have loved that, but the episode we got was still great. And Dr. Samberly jumped to drinking urine disturbingly quickly. I'm just gonna say that. Just just gonna put that out there. And and clearly, like Thompson and Sousa agree based on their reactions. Very tense when Jack talks down um, Agent Vega. You know, it, it legitimately, yeah, you know, usually Vernon Masters gets what he wants. And, yeah, like this, you know, just Thompson had plans inside of plans inside of plans. Very cool, you know, the... This is this is essentially the big like payoff to you know there's been a lot of like back and forth you know he he saw the the fake newspaper had he yeah he learned the wording of the newspaper headline before you know the thing happened and then he sees that that was literally verbatim what they used and you know yeah he's he's the, f the fact that Vernon, you know, got him the job when he was struggling obviously means a lot to him. So, yeah, it's been very, like, is he, where is he gonna land kind of thing. And, you know, we got a little bit of that when the, the, um, let's see, yeah, when he, when he, you know, listened in on Vernon and then tried to to prevent him from getting the the contents of the wall safe. 
but this is the I, f I feel like is the really big payoff to that so yeah very nicely done and yeah the hot wire is legitimately very clever and Edwin Jarvis will briefly be played by C3PO like him you know being oh yeah brilliant let's just let's just walk that's your plan that's your plan you know just yeah very like really has the energy of of the, the vibe of right after they land on Tatooine and C3PO is very upset at the all these adventures it'll be fine and yeah legitimately strong scene when Peggy and Edwin Jarvis argue and they do end up you know really confronting each other about things that yeah really that have been under the under the surface but in in the air kind of thing and yeah I appreciate the weight the that it's given that that Anna will not be able to, to you know, do, um, do that thing that that cis men can't do. Although what it is, I, I cannot conceive. No, I will never tire of of quoting that joke. That is that is one of the best Blackadder jokes of all time. But yeah, the the. Um, you know, yeah, she says, ah, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. And he's like, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, crap, indeed. That was also very, very cool and very clever. You know, yeah, like, obviously, he's, you know, he's going to lower his guard if he thinks that Peggy is literally unconscious. Shins, yeah. And... Let's see why are these men here rather than in a shallow grave I love Kurt Rusmith so much and let's see yeah and and Jack suggests you know the the these two guys can fix the cannon and then you can use it on Whitney Frost and just so clever, because, yeah, you know, Vernon clearly does not like having to take orders from Whitney Frost. And really, the, you know, like, he clearly would have no qualms about killing her. It's just that he doesn't really know how to, you know, right now, she's the more powerful one. And he hates that. He does not like having less power than someone else in any given situation, you know. The, so, so, yeah. Very and and that's the you know that's how you make something like this work is you play on people's like subconscious kind of stuff because like if he wasn't if that wasn't such a big deal for him he'd be like are you this sounds suspicious to me you know and let's see. my name is Doctor Samberly. I just want you to know I am very happy to be working with you. You know, won't let you down. And and Vernon is like, is it absolutely necessary? Do we need him? Is it at all possible? Uh, is the shallow grave thing completely out of the question? And let's see. yeah, and so. Whitney is determined to get the zero matter out of Jason, Dr. Wilkes. And so she gets this massive needle and, like, stabs into to his upper torso. And it's like, oh, my God. And, and, you know, she points out sometimes pain is necessary to get to scientific achievement. And that, yeah, technically accurate. That is, if, yeah. You know, if, and if you're if you're unethical about it, you're not gonna try to avoid that pain. <laughs> I really love when pay like she just you know opens the door. There's Vernon. 
where are they? <laughs> like, fully, just 100%. She's not even, like, trying to hide it from the other SSR, and they're all, they're all like, should we, should we stop her? And then, you know, finally, like, Daniel's like, Peggy, please, we're, we're okay, you know, just, yeah, that was, that was very entertaining. That just, honestly, I would 100% be down for Haley Atwell as, like, you know, not necessarily Batman, but some vigilante, you know, that woman, some some vigilante that that beats people and and interrogates like that. That yeah. And let's see. Then we have the. Um, uh, what the heck did I write? Oh, right, right. Yeah. Um. So Jack. Yeah, if, very clever that you know Jack dis um disabled the car. And then, yeah, you know, he goes to, oh, right, that's later. Anyway, yes, so Jack goes to talk to Whitney, and, yeah, you know, so, here's what Vernon wants to do that he doesn't know that I'm telling you right now that he wants to do. He's very, very clever, just, yeah, and... Yeah, and he claims, you know, I want a seat at the council, which, yeah, you know, as long as, like, Whitney's the kind of person who, as long as she feels confident that she knows what's going on, you know, she's she's not necessarily going to question that sort of thing. And, yeah, you know, the first time they met, he was already in the club, so she does kind of assume that he must just want to go to the top, which is also, that's a big weakness of many really, really powerful people who choose to do evil. They can't really imagine anything other than being powerful and choosing to do evil. So when they encounter someone that seems to be on that same path, they're going to be like, oh, they sh sure thing, you got it, buddy. You know, I'll I'll help you, you help me. We can work this out together. You know, she doesn't stop and think, would someone who works for the SSR really do that? You know, just, yeah, very nicely done. I, I quite appreciate fiction that underlines this sort of, you know, this is also something in, in classic Star Wars, the big, you know, the problem for the, the top evil characters is hubris, which is Greek for hubris. And yes, another joke. I I can't stop quoting. Just big fan of MST3K. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So the Doctor Sam release trying to impress Rose again. So I told him, listen, buddy. I don't care if you're Vernon Masters or Tarzan of the Jungle. You say please and thank you, and it's like. He's still not over that. Like this is that that was a thing several episodes ago. He was like, a "Please, wouldn't kill you," you know. No, no, he's he's still. That's where his mind still is, you know. Just yeah, and and of course he's he's like trying to make himself look tough when he was a puppy dog when Vernon Masters was actually in the room. Just yeah, and yeah. It's, oh yeah, the plan. Didn't he tell you the plan? He said it was your plan. It's, it, it'll work. It's not working. <laughs> Why isn't it working? You only gave me two minutes. You said that was enough. Shouting is not going to make it work. Yeah, I'm... If I was in the situation, I would feel Daniel Soames' frustration. But I'm watching it, so I'm just enjoying it. But yeah, the, the holy crap, dude. And just, yeah. <laughs> and I, I like again, you know, Rose, the moment she hears, oh, you know, Dr. Sambley isn't doing exactly, you know, he, he's able to help carry out the mission, but he's not doing exactly, so she just says, help, you know, do, do the right thing. And... 
see. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we have Whitney, you know, revealing that she knows that Vernon was trying to, is trying to to zap her with the with the thingamajig, the gamma rays, and you know Jack. And we, yeah, we get some more great Kurt Wood Smith. You know, I <laughs> I want you to know I really appreciate all you've done for me. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> And you know, Jack really furrows his brow like he's like smoke is bugging his eyes or something and tells him, uh, you know, I know you're not supposed to let a good opportunity pass me up. Just I love that Vernon isn't just like begging and pleading, he's still trying to do his mind games, you know, just yeah. Really, I, I love a, a villain that doesn't beg. And let's see, yeah, and so, yeah, uh, she starts to, 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 you know, kill him with the zero matter. And, you know, Peggy makes the mistake of walking ahead of Dr. Wilkes, who locks the door behind her. And, you know, really, really cool as we see, um, yeah, I think it's like, it's like up his arm, it's like growing, looks like he's been possessed by a Kandarian demon or something, and, you know, yeah, he, he gets in, into the, the, uh, the, yeah, the room with Vernon and, and Whitney, and then he like explodes and the episode ends and oh my god i i'm really 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 looking forward to tomorrow to seeing what happens next like holy crap and that's the that's the finale season finale and series finale although i don't think it was originally intended to be the series finale yeah holy crap just and and yeah also a really solid discussion between Peggy, Sousa, and, and Thompson about, you know, detonating the, the thing. And, yeah, so some IMDb trivia. The dance sequence was choreographed by Louis Van Amstel from Dancing with the Stars. He brought in the following featured dancers from that show. Dimitri Chaplin, Damien Whitewood, Sasha Farber, Anna Trebonskaya, and Karina Smirnoff. The musical number What You Gonna Do features music by series composer Christopher Leonards and lyrics by David Zippel, who also wrote the lyrics for Star Spangled Man for Captain America and the Warner Soul, uh, First Avenger. That would have been a very different movie if that had played in them. Anyway, although they had never worked together before, they had gone to the same high school. And. Let's see, Robert Roldan, Marlene Ostergaard, and Sarge Onik were, uh, let's see, were featured dancers in So You Think You Can Dance. And yeah, that is it for this one. Yes, um, tomorrow I'm going to try to do the finale and the spoiler free review. And yeah, I am quite happy that I am well aware this is not the last Marvel TV show to feature a musical number. <laughs>